Once you make it to chapter 4 in Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, you'll be in the Junon region. And similar to the Grasslands, there is going to be a bunch of cool things you can do and collect in the Junon region. We do already have a video uploaded on the channel showing every single collectible and useful thing in Chapter 4. However, that video is almost an hour long, so I understand not everybody has time to watch and follow along with that video. So this is more of a checklist of most important things you want to make sure you're picking up before you leave Junon. So the first thing we want to do as soon as we start Chapter Number 4 is do the side quest down here at Gabe's Ranch called Stuck in a Rut. Now the reason for this is that it not only unlocks the ability to use chocobos in this region, which is needed to climb up some of the mountains, but it also unlocks fast travel back to the grasslands, so we can freely go between the grasslands and Junon whenever we like. Once we get inside the small town over here to the west called Under Junon, from the central plaza we want to go down the stairs towards the docks. As soon as we get to the bottom of the stairs, you want to turn left and hug the mountain until you see this purple materia. This is going to be a free HP up materia, which is always nice to have. There'll be a point where all of our party members go to the inn and they go to their individual rooms to rest up for the night. When we approach Aerith's room for the first time, we'll have a short cutscene where Red leaves and you can hear them talking. However, after this cutscene, you want to go back and knock on Aerith's door again to get inside her room and here there's going to be a treasure chest. Inside this chest, you're going to be able to find the Empress Scepter, which is a weapon for Aerith. Now, after the events that take place in the inn, you'll be asked to go to talk to Priscilla down by the docks in Under Junon to advance the story. However, this is going to be a point of no return. The game will give you a warning. So make sure you don't go past that point of no return before finishing up the rest of the things we're going to mention here in Junon. So after the events in the inn we just spoke about, we want to make sure we do two side quests that will now become available. The first one is going to be called When Words Won't Do, which is started by speaking to Rhonda just outside the very same inn. All we need to do is accompany her dog walking all the way across the other side of Junon. Now the reason we want to do this is because by doing this side quest we unlock access to the other settlement in Junon which is over to the east called the Crow's Nest. And there's a bunch of stuff in the Crow's Nest settlement, we'll go into some of those a little bit later on in the video. Now the other side quest we want to make sure we do as soon as we leave the inn is calling all frogs. To start the side quest go back to the under Junon town square and then go down the stairs to the docks. Once we get to the docks we want to go all the way over to the left hand side to the end of the beach. Here we'll see a group of kids playing around in this purple mist, which turns people into frogs. Now after a short encounter, this will unlock the minigame called Jump Frog, which we can repeat as many times as we like after the quest. Now I would recommend getting at least rank 2 on this minigame. For each rank you get, you're going to get an Enfeeblement Ring. What the Enfeeblement Ring does is that when a character has this ring equipped, they'll start the battle as a toad, pretty much making them useless. Now you're probably asking yourself, why would you want to start the battle as a toad? Well, the main reason being is this is the closest you can get to playing the game solo. Let's say you want to play the game with just one character for whatever reason. As you can't directly remove characters from your party, you can have two characters with these enfeeblement rings on, making them toads at the start of the fight and pretty much making them useless so you can play by yourself. Now this isn't only really for bragging rights or anyone who wants to challenge, but also in case you want to maybe steal from an enemy or stagger them, put pressure on them for certain challenges, and you're simply doing too much damage and your allies won't stop attacking them. Next up, you want to make sure you are unlocking the summon for this region, which is going to be the Phoenix Summon. Of course, for this, we need to speak to Chadley, which can be found here at Gabe's Ranch, for example. And we want to do the combat challenge called Summon Entity Phoenix. This is a pretty rough fight. If you are having a hard time, remember you can always do the three Divine Intels first. Each time we do a Divine Intel, it will weaken the Phoenix, allowing us to fight a weaker version of him. The three Divine Intels can be found here where I'm showing you on the map. The third one down here in Crow's Nest, you actually have to leave the Crow's Nest settlement from the south entrance. And as soon as you exit the Crow's Nest, you want to turn left down by the cliffside and walk around. It's kind of confusing with the marker on the map of where it actually is. But then once we've done all three of these divine intels and we go into the combat challenge to fight the Phoenix Summon, we actually get the choice to fight a weakened version. As you can see here, there's no real downside for this. You still unlock the Phoenix Summon even if you defeat the weak versions. Another one of Chadley's combat challenges I would recommend getting done is the one called Biological Intel Breath of Life. The reason for this is that it's going to unlock the Soothing Breeze for the enemy skill. Soothing Breeze actually restores HP to all of the allies in the surrounding area, so it's definitely a really good ability to have unlocked for enemy skill. Now we're talking about Chadley anyway, you want to go ahead and go into his Develop Material menu, and you can now actually craft the Magic Efficiency Material, which is pretty good as whichever material this is linked to costs less MP to use. More useful things you can buy in this area, after we do the Moogle Intel in this region, it will unlock the level 2 of the Emporium, allowing us to buy a few useful things. First of all, it's going to be the scriptures for both Aerith and Red, giving them 10 SP points each, which is useful. As well as also being able to buy the Precision Defense Focus Materia Earrings, which is a really good accessory for Cloud. 
we did mention before about unlocking Crow's Nest. So once you do have access to Crow Nest, here we can actually find our first sheet of music on the piano. This sheet of music is going to be for the On Our Way song. We want to play this on the piano and get at least A rank. After we've accomplished A rank on this sheet of music, we want to talk to the NPC here in the sunglasses just to the right of the piano, and he's going to give us a free HP up material. Of course, I would recommend doing every single intel in every region. However, even if you're a person that's not really too interested in getting 100% of everything, we just don't have time, I would recommend at least doing the Phenomenon intel in this region, as they are going to be the Fort Condor minigames. Each one of the Phenomenon intel is going to be a minigame of the Fort Condor. And once you do all of them, you're actually going to unlock hard mode for the Fort Condor minigame, which is going to be needed for a trophy later on, so if you want to go ahead and do those now. Similar to like in the Grasslands, there is also going to be a classified hidden intel in this region, which is going to unlock when we do all of the expedition intels. Once we complete all four of the expedition intels, finding all of the life springs, it's going to unlock the classified intel, which is going to be a bit of a mini boss fight against a mind flayer right here on the map. Other than this, before we advance on, make sure you're playing everybody at the Queen's Blood card minigame. They come up on the map, so you should be doing this automatically every time you get to a new region. Uh, there's actually also a new booster pack. You can buy one from the vendor in Under Junon from the general item store. And another booster pack can actually be bought from the vending machine in Crow's Nest. So if you are trying to keep up on all of the cards, make sure you go to those two shops and play all of the players in this region. So now you're finally ready to talk to Priscilla and go past that point of no return. Once you get to the upper Junon military base, there are three more things you want to do. The first one is get the seventh assemble trophy, which you can do by just after changing into the soldier gear, which happens automatically during the story. There's going to be a section where you need to recruit a few units for the parade. Now, mandatory, you only have to recruit 5, but for this trophy, you want to make sure you recruit all 10. I do have a guide showing the location of all 10 of the units. If you need that, I'll leave it in the description down below. And the second trophy you can get here is Stealing the Show, which is done by getting at least 100,000 positive points in the Parade Formation minigame, which you don't need to do perfectly, as long as you recruited all 10 of the infantry units. And just before you actually start the parade, when you talk to the NPC, you actually get a choice to change around your formation, which will give you different performances. Whichever formation you use, you want to make sure it's one that gives you three-star difficulty on all three of the performances at the top. For example, one that works great is where it says participating units, you will have two green ones on the left, two blue ones on the right, then the flame troopers right in the middle. This, as you can see, will give us three-star difficulty on all performances, allowing us to get more points. Like I said, you don't need to do these perfectly, you can afford a few mistakes and still get the trophy. And finally, the last thing you want to make sure you don't miss out on in Junon is just after the parade, as soon as you regain control of Cloud, there's going to be a purple chest of chest just to the right of the bench right in front of us. This chest is going to contain another weapon for Cloud called the Rune Sword, so make sure you go ahead and pick this up. That is it guys, I hope you did find this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up button, subscribe for more content coming very soon, and we'll see you next time.